This weekend, viewers are in for a very special treat when the moon moves in front of the sun, blocking sunlight and creating a fantastic ring of fire in the sky. This is an annual eclipse, not a total eclipse, but we'll have one of those soon enough. Here to talk about how to safely view this eclipse and what else is coming up is NASA expert Anita Day, NASA Outreach and Engagement Partnerships Manager for NASA Science Mission Directorate. Anita, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. So now, Anita, let's get right to it. Talk to me about what we will be able to see. Yes. So as you said, this is an annular eclipse, which means in Boston, you will see the sun with just a little bit of a nibble out of it. For those in the path of annularity, so the eclipse path of annularity is going to be from Texas to Oregon. For those people, they will be able to see the ring of fire that you mentioned. When the moon moves in front of the sun, it's not going to block the sun completely. So there'll be this beautiful, beautiful uh, circle uh, of sun that you'll still be able to see. And annular simply means ring in Latin. Well, there. Okay, so breaking down exactly what you mean when we say ring of fire. All right, we got it. Uh, how visible will this be here in Massachusetts? Yeah, so like I said, you'll get a little bit of a nibble out of the sun. It'll look like the, the moon has taken a bite out of the sun. Um, so it won't be the, a, a full coverage. And you may not even notice a shift in the light. You may not even notice a shift in the light uh, when, when it happens. But you mentioned the April total eclipse. That is when Boston is almost in the path of totality. And so the, the um, sun will be almost completely obscured by the moon at that point. And talking a little bit more about the big eclipse in April of next year, can we just let people know how it'll be different from what we're seeing to, tomorrow because for some people this is this is their first time kind of going down the rabbit hole and they're excited but they'll be learning this kind of thing and kind of diving into it for the first time yeah yeah thanks so the eclipse that's happening tomorrow like you said is an annular eclipse and so the moon isn't going to completely cover the sun um there'll still be that ring of fire still be some light and so from a safety perspective, there's a different uh, message there. So during the annular eclipse, you can never take off your safety glasses or look at the sun directly. You should never look at the sun directly anyway. It's just too bright for our eyes. But during a total eclipse, if you are in the path of totality, if the sun is completely covered by the moon, that is a moment that you will be able to take off your glasses because it will be completely dark. And what's going to be so special, not just the darkness, not just the change in temperature and the, you know, how the animals change their behavior during a total eclipse, but also you will see the corona of the sun, these wispy bits around the sun. That is the atmosphere of the sun. And we can't see that at any other time because the sun itself is too bright. So it's a perfect moment for scientific study of the corona. What you're describing is incredible, but eclipses aren't just incredible events to witness. They're also scientifically valuable. Can you talk to us about the special science that NASA is, is doing during these upcoming eclipses? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So it, uh, NASA will be launching three sounding rockets during the eclipse. Uh, one will go up just before, one will go up during, and one will go up just after to see um, the differences in the atmosphere, you know, during those three stages. Um, what happens during an eclipse, the cutoff of the sun's rays, that solar energy, causes a change in the ionosphere. The, ionos the ionosphere shrinks at night without the sun's energy. And so during an eclipse, it also shrinks, but it happens differently because um, the solar energy is cut off so quickly. Hey, thank you so much. This was all very interesting. And if people weren't excited before, they will be excited now. Our NASA Outreach and Engagement Partnerships Manager for a NASA Science Mission Directorate, thank you so much for joining us here on CBS News Boston. Thank you so much.